As the title says, I'll be going through my photography findings during my trip through uh, Japan and Korea. Before I do that, let me first introduce myself a bit. Uh, my name is Winston Lee. I'm a travel photographer based out in Los Angeles, and I'm soon going to go on a nomadic trip. Uh, so if you want to know more about that event, as well as the events leading up to that, uh, feel free to follow my sites down below or subscribe to this channel. Now that all that good stuff is out the way, let's discuss what the main point of this video is, which is just, uh, packing for a large scale trip like the one I just had, uh, spanning for more than a few weeks. Uh, long story short, uh, I was actually planning to have this nomadic trip uh, during October, which is when this big trip was planned, but due to events, I couldn't do that. Long story short, I decided to postpone that trip uh, to early next year, and I decided to use this as uh, somewhat of a practice. And by practice, I mean uh, I treated this trip as if I were going to be leaving for a year or so and not coming back. So I packed quite a bit. I separated basically my packing into three categories, which I will discuss next, starting with the first category. So in the first category, we have my Peak Design 30 liter travel backpack, my Peak Design 45 liter travel backpack, eight pairs of underwear, eight shirts, four pairs of pants, eight pairs of socks, one puffer jacket, two pairs of glasses, and one hat. In the second category, we have the tech related items, which consists of the following. I'm not gonna read it, it's a long list, so you can, you can just read it off the screen. <laughs> but it's a lot, <laughs> which again, I will discuss going forward. Uh, and then the third category, we have all the bathroom related items, which is not really a lot. I actually was able to fit this in my Peak Design 30 liter travel backpack, small pocket. Believe it or not, I was actually able to fit all these items in my two travel backpacks. Uh, however, it was way too heavy, especially for me since my trip spanned over five weeks through Seoul to Busan to Osaka and then finally to Tokyo. So four cities having all that weight, which I believe, if I remember correctly, was around 78 kilograms on your back. Uh, it was pretty painful. <laughs> but again, my thought process was I wanted to first practice for the actual event. I wanted to see how much I can actually carry and if I actually minded, which spoiler alert, I do mind. Uh, and also I wanted to see what gear I would actually use and what I wouldn't use. I figured I wouldn't know until I actually tried. So. I can safely say that there are items that I will use and items that I will probably not use much. And those are probably the ones I will get rid of. Now with the two backpack uh, idea, I actually got the idea from Roman Fox, who is a fellow photographer whose work I absolutely love. It's great work, check it out if you don't know. Um, but he had a YouTube video that I watched talking about his two backpack setup, which I believe was a 30 liter travel backpack and the 20 liter uh, Peak Design pack. I forgot the name, but it's the regular one. He basically fit all his gear and his clothes inside that. So I figured, you know, why not me? Um, and yeah, I overpacked a lot. <laughs> the main idea is to have everything with you during your flight. That way the airline can't possibly lose your things. And also it just makes it a lot easier for you to not have to check your bags in. To try and drastically lower the weight of all the things that I carried, I categorized the following into two categories. Uh, one, the items that I can for sure take out and have no regrets whatsoever. And number two, the items that I'm currently thinking about taking out and I may or may not take out when the actual trip does happen. So the items I know that I can definitely take out are the following. My Bose headphones, three shirts, two pairs of pants, three pairs of socks, three pairs of underwear, one of my Peak Design backpacks, and finally, the 35 GM. These are the items I know I can definitely take out without any regrets whatsoever. Uh, the clothes were pretty obvious. I can always just take my clothes to the washing machine, whether it's in my Airbnb or a coin laundry, and just wash it there if you know I need to have more clothes to wear. Uh, bringing extras, I thought was a good idea, but I can again just wash it or buy some, you know, some some clothes there. <laughs> For the headphones, I only really used the headphones during my flight as I needed the noise cancellation to sleep. But other than that, I really just used my AirPods. And one of the Peak Design travel backpacks that may surprise a few, but I think I found a setup that I liked more. Uh, which I will discuss later. I will discuss what I'll be swapping out the Peak Design backpack with. And then finally, the 35 GM. Now, don't get me wrong, I love this lens. I don't really 
use the lens as much as I should because I just have, I have the 1635 GM, which covers 99% of all situations for night photography if I ever need the uh, 35 GM. I honestly could just use a 24 GM and just use a 1.5 crop. It won't be the same, but it's something that I actually would rather have as I go out with my 24 GM and 55 1.8 Zeiss or 85 millimeter 1.8 Zeiss. Uh, I usually never go out with a 24 and 35 or 35 and 55, but that's just me. So no hate on the lens, it's just I don't use it as much as I should. As for the items I'm currently debating whether to keep are the following. The DJI Mini 3 Pro and the Siri tripod. The DJI Mini 3 Pro is an absolutely great drone, don't get me wrong. However, uh, there are a few reasons why I decided to put this on the maybe leave out and maybe keep uh, list. Going into foreign countries, the laws differ a lot from the states and it gets confusing, especially Korea. I don't know if I can actually fly a drone in Korea. Uh, I've checked the sites and some sites say you should do this and you should do that. And I'd rather not get arrested for uh, doing drone photography. So that's the main reason why I didn't use the drone in Korea and also why I have it on my list. Uh, in Japan, it's a bit different because you can just pay a fee and have it registered, but even their laws are a bit confusing because they just changed it, I believe this year. Those reasons are the main reasons why I'm a little hesitant on doing drone photography in foreign countries. The next and final item is the Siri tripod. Now again, with this item, same as the 35GN, I love this tripod, it's done wonders for me. It's a perfect tripod in my opinion, except for one thing. The reason, or the only reason why I put this tripod on my list is because of not its weight, because it's actually really light, but it's size when it's folded and everything is condensed up. It's very long still, not, not wide, but just very long. And it's very difficult for me to put it in my backpack. I don't like to put my tripod in my side pockets for my backpack just because it just screams, I'm a photographer, I'm a photographer. And you know, I'd rather be very subtle about it. I like being very subtle about my photography. Um, so I like to put it actually in my backpack along with my gear. Uh, so that's one of the main reasons why I have this on the leave out list or keep list. So with all of these items that I'm dropping and I'm thinking about taking out, naturally, I would also think about the items that would help me during my trips and also my photography. So that's what I'll be discussing in this section. Everything that I thought of during my trip and also after my trip. Those items include the Sony 24-105 F4, a carry-on suitcase, a Peak Design Travel Tripod, and the Sony A7R5. During my first day in Korea, I quickly realized I needed a mid-range zoom lens as I switched lens so many times during, not even the day, just that trip, that hike up Namsan Tower. And that was, it was absolute hell. So I'd rather avoid that. <laughs> I needed a mid-range zoom lens very badly and I decided to go with the 24 to 105 f4 rather than the uh, 24 to 70 just for a couple of reasons. One being the price. It's really expensive to get that 24 to 70 GM and the 24 to 105 f4 used because I bought it off of, um, not sponsored, <laughs> I bought it off of uh, MPB I believe is the site, but I got it around 850 or so with tax 940 or something like that, but is drastically cheaper than you know the 2400 or something. The second reason being I don't need the 2.8, I can just use the f4 during the day. I usually use primes anyways during night photography as I want more light. And the 2.8, I've tried using my 1635 GM 2.8 during night, and it is doable, it is doable, but. I would rather have the 1.8 and also just have, you know, a more subtle setup being the lenses are usually smaller with the uh, prime lenses. Uh, so that's why I got the F4 as, you know, I don't need it. If I, if I do do night photography with this lens, it will really only be on a tripod, which again, I don't need the 2.8 for that. The second item is a carry-on suitcase. It can literally be any carry-on suitcase. I actually got mine from uh, Japan on my last day. <laughs> I bought some stuff from uh, Uniqlo and they, you know, they had sales. And anyways, that's a different story. I'm planning on actually bringing this instead of my Peak Design, one of my Peak Design travel backpacks just because I can actually roll this. But if I need to carry it, it will be only for short times, you know, up flight of stairs or something. But this will allow me to roll 
a lot of my stuff, such as my clothes, I can put my tripod inside there, my gimbal. I can roll a lot of my things and not have to worry about carrying it. And also with the Peak Design Travel backpacks, they actually have a little strap in the back that you can actually put on like the handle of your suitcase so you can roll all of that. So I can actually just roll everything that I have that I'm carrying with me on the ground. That'll make my life way easier. Next, I have the Peak Design Travel Tripod on the list. Now, the Peak Design Travel Tripod and the Siri Tripod that I have right here, they're very similar. The weights are similar, they're compared a lot. The Siri Tripod is actually like half the price, but the main reason why I'm thinking of the Peak Design Travel Tripod is because when it's condensed, it is so small. I can easily put it in my backpack during day trips. Again, I like to be subtle. I'll definitely be making updates about this. I will also be making a video and talking about, you know, any decisions that I make about my setup as well as what I decided to go with. If you're interested in seeing those videos about my potential setup as well as videos I'll be making in the future about just how I do a photography, um, please like, subscribe, and follow my social media links down below as well as my website. And uh, I will talk to you later. Bye.